Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will talk about the brand new Arduino R4. To talk about the new Arduino R4, we have to take the Arduino R3 into perspective. Personally, I like to talk about the Arduino Uno R3 SMD version, since all the new Arduino boards are also SMD versions. So taking a look on the new Arduino R4 Minima, first thing we notice is the brand new color we have for the PCB board itself. But before we start to talk about the details and the differences, we have to note that there is not only one new Arduino R4, there are actually two. The second one is called Arduino R4 Wi-Fi. So first things first, the dimensions of the Arduino Uno are still the same for the Arduino Minima as well as for the Arduino R4 Wi-Fi. So this will satisfy everyone who tries to fit or to retrofit this new Arduino R4 into our existing housing. Having the form factor cleared, next thing we will notice is the new main port we can find. Before it was a big and bulky port and now we can find these little ports. So Arduino finally moved from USB-B which was super bulky and basically nowhere to find except printers maybe to a state-of-the-art USB-C port. A move that Raspberry Pi did already a couple of years ago with the Raspberry Pi 4 and Arduino finally arrived at USB-C as well which I think is very much welcomed because it's just so convenient and much smaller than the old USB-B port. Taking a closer look on the R4 Wi-Fi, we can spot the Wi-Fi module. Funny enough, this Wi-Fi module is actually an Espressive ESP32, which can be used as a standalone microcontroller in form of an ESP32 Node MCU version, which is also capitalizing the Espressive chip. So Arduino is using this ESP32 to provide Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi. So using this ESP by Espressive, which is a standalone microcontroller by its own, just for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, showcases that Arduino has a pretty hard time with all those wireless connectivity. Of course it's nice to establish Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on a standard UNO board, but this kind of bulky hybrid melting this ESP board into the UNO is probably one of the reasons why we see so little Arduino boards incorporating Wi-Fi and Bluetooth from the beginning. But the R4 Wi-Fi got actually another new port, which is this port right here on the right end corner. I won't try to pronounce this crazy name of the connector, but it's basically a port that was established by Sparkfunk to easily connect I2C sensors and other boards for educational purposes and just to have a quick setup without trying to establish I2C communication via the jumper cables, which can be quite sketchy and not very stable for I2C high frequency communication. Putting all this aside, there's actually one more thing we cannot miss about the Wi-Fi. And that's actually this giant LED matrix. First of all, it may seem a bit gimmicky because no one will actually use it in a real product or a real use case. But you have to keep in mind that Arduino is for educational purposes first. So all those makers prototyping something quickly or schools and universities just want to display something in a simple way. It's nice to have this matrix on board and not the need to connect any kind of external matrix, which is not just blocking a lot of ports. But of course, the capability of having this on board is making it much more likely that you actually use it compared to an external LED matrix you have to connect first. But let's get back to the numbers. Comparing the Arduino Uno R3 with the Arduino Uno R4 Minima and the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, we will take a look on the prices first. The R3 comes at 24 euros. As of right now, maybe this price will decrease in the future. For the UNO R4 Minima, we have to pay 18 euros, which is basically a huge decrease from those 24 euros and highly appreciated to make Arduino, which is a great board itself, more competitive against those boards like the ESP32 as a Node MCU version. Most interesting, in my opinion, is the R4 Wi-Fi because this one is at 25 euros. And while you could argue that it's a bit more expensive than R3, you have to take a look on what kind of more features and capabilities you get. Beside this LED matrix, which is certainly creating some extra cost, you also have the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and a bunch of other new features and more power, which we will dig into in a second. Why I want to point out this so specifically is you have to remember before there was the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi, which was basically an 
R2 version of the Arduino capable of connecting to Wi-Fi, which wasn't working perfectly in course of a lot of compatibility issues. And this Arduino Uno Wi-Fi, the old version, R2 version, was priced at 46 euros. Actually, it was even more. So now with the R4 Wi-Fi, you get a much newer board, much more capability, nice extras like the LED matrix, USB-C port and on and on and on. And all this for 25 bucks is a pretty good price for Arduino speaking. Of course there are less expensive boards out there like the ESP32 or the ESP8266 but that's something for another video. But for the Arduino portfolio that's a really good deal. But let's dig into the details. Starting with the connectivity of the UNO R3, we had I2C, SPI and UART on board. While the R4 is covering all those protocols, it's actually adding a new one, which is the CAN bus. The CAN bus is maybe a little bit unknown in the maker scene, but for everything that's related to cars, the CAN bus is the bus to go. So basically all your onboard communication within your vehicle, no matter if it's a combustion engine or an electric vehicle, is using the CAN bus. So bringing this bus to the Arduino is potentially unlocking a whole new world of possibilities where you can use a lot of car components to build your new project. The R4 Wi-Fi will cover all those protocols as well, as well as the CAN bus. Taking a look on the power supply, there have been major changes as well. While the R3 was able to accept up to 12 volts recommended or 20 volts maximum beside the 5 volts USB, the new R4 boards can accept up to 24 volts. Even though this increase may seem minor, it's actually very significant. Because 24 volts are the standard power level for industrial applications. So all those PLCs out there and all those industrial sensors and everything will be supplied with normally 24 volts. So having the capability of supplying the Arduino with 24 volts as well, you can just hook it up to your existing power supply in case you want to have an Arduino as an extension of your existing industrial application or of course using industrial components in your project. Please do not confuse that the logic level will stay the same 5 volts as before. So there's basically no change in the logic level. So don't try to send 24 volts on your GPIO pins, you will basically burn them down. One more thing to mention since we're talking about power already is that there is an op amp integrated into the Arduino that you can use for your project. So in case you have a very weak signal of a sensor you can amplify this with the internal operation amplifier ready there, sitting there, waiting to be used by you. Talking about GPIOs we should dig into this topic a bit deeper. The R3 came with 14 GPIOs and 6 additional ADC ports, so analog inputs. While the R4 is keeping those 14 GPIOs for digital communication and also keeping those six analog ports wired straight to the ADC, it's introducing a new port which is basically a digital to analog converter for which one of the analog ports can be used. The same goes for the Wi-Fi. We have 14 GPIOs, six ADCs of which one can be used as a digital to analog converter. So next up are the changes to the processing power. First of all, Arduino is moving from an 8-bit structure to a 32-bit structure, but beside that, it's also giving you much more processing grind. The former 16 megahertz clock speed are now transformed to 48 megahertz clock speed for the Wi-Fi and for the minima. While speed may be not the biggest concern for your application, I'm pretty sure all of you ran into memory and storage problems with your Arduino R3. While the UNO R3 was equipped with 32 kilobyte of storage and 2 kilobyte of RAM and also 1 kilobyte of EEPROM, the new R4 versions are equipped with 256 kilobyte of storage and 32 kilobyte of RAM storage. Of course the same goes for the Wi-Fi. And that's something you have to let sink in for a moment because the former 32 kilobyte of storage is the same size as the RAM storage in the new versions. So that's a major increase. So this will allow you to have much more capable coding, especially comments in the code or something in the past where you tried to delete them before you upload the code because you had to save this storage. Now you can just leave in the comments in the code. So nice for documentation, nice for working in a team. And for those of you who care, the EEPROM was actually increased significantly as well. Last up is the wireless connectivity. While the R3 had no Wi-Fi at all, same as for the Minima, 
the Arduino Wi-Fi of course has the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. Even though I don't understand why Arduino is not making the move to establish Wi-Fi on all boards, I think it's quite reasonable to have those 25 euros for the Wi-Fi version. And since they have those kind of bulky integration of ESP32, I kind of understand why they're not rolling it out to the minima as well. Even though it seems like Arduino has not fully arrived in the wireless world, it's nice to see a Wi-Fi capable UNO at a reasonable price with a lot of extra features like the LED matrix, the new processing power, bigger storage, op amp, digital analog converter and a lot of new ports. So I hope this video was a good overview for you about the new Arduino UNO boards. Let us know your opinion in the comments. What do you think about the new Arduino boards? What do you think about the pricing? And do you think Wi-Fi should be rolled out to all Arduino boards? Or is it fine to have those dedicated Wi-Fi versions? Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to be subscribed in case you're interested in more content around IoT. And see you next time.